All right, so let's move on to the blocks. We're just moving on. We've just created a ball that can move around. So our ball class is pretty simple, just a ball that moves around the screen. So it's a plain white ball for now. We're actually going to change the colors of all this stuff later, but for now it's just black and white. But um, the ball can't move unless I actually press the mouse right now. So that's kind of good. Now we're going to add the paddle class. So to create a paddle, so again, we're just going to we're going to do this top down so we're going to just say what we want to do and then write the methods and the classes later so we're going to make a new paddle so we'll just have one paddle and we'll make that paddle dot display and we'll show the paddle on the screen so we don't need to worry about any of that stuff so go ahead and write the new paddle class and for the paddle, what we're going to do, let's go ahead and make it. So we'll say public class paddle. So the variables you want. So you're going to just basically you want to have an x, y, um, a width, and a um, height. And we're going to use a rectangle because we're going to use a rectangle for our paddle. We're not going to use an image, although you could use an image, but for now we're just going to use a rectangle. Um, by the end, we'll probably change it to a, an image, and we'll just make the image the size of our rectangle. But for now, let's just use a rectangle. It'll make it a lot easier for us to see it. So make a class paddle with a rectangle, and see if you can make it so that the ball stays on the paddle and follows the mouse around. So you're going to use the mouse x to determine the position of the X and you're going to have the Y value fixed and the ball should sit there unless you press the mouse button then it should go around okay so start with that first so let's just make the the rectangle and have the ball sit on it and when you click the mouse it goes off and hits the walls and when it hits the bottom it stops that's fine okay go okay so let's see how you guys did so how I did this was um, let's do private float and we need an X a Y a width an H and do we need anything else I don't think so we'll, 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 we'll leave that for now and let's go ahead and write the constructor so public paddle So we'll let the x equal width divided by 2 to start. We'll make the y equal height minus... Nat, can you turn that down, please? What? Can you turn it down, please? I'm recording. Thanks. So we'll say it's the other one was height minus 50 or 70. So we'll do height minus 50. That'll give us some distance between them. And we'll set the um, width equal to... Um, let's make it 100. That's easy. And with the height, we'll make it 20. Let's just see what that looks like to start. And for the public void display, what we're going to do is we're going to um, draw a rectangle at X, Y, W, and H. And what we need to, let's just first run this. I haven't actually checked this. Okay, so there's our, okay, so it looks like I moved it too far down. So let's actually do height minus 60. It doesn't really matter that much. Okay, so there it is. And that's a kind of a small paddle. So I could probably make it a little bigger. Let's make it 200. We'll make the game easy to start. All right, so there's my paddle. Now you'll notice this is key that the ball is being drawn in the center, but the paddle is being drawn by the corner on the top left. That's because the rec function starts at top corner, draws width and height. So what you need to do is you need to shift the paddle over by half of the width of the thing. So we're gonna slide this over. And the way you slide stuff is you basically do X minus width over two. So whatever the width is, you're going to move it to the left that so far. Ah, go away. Try to photobomb my video. Okay, so there we go. So now we got the ball there. And uh, you know what? Let's do something here. Let's do fill. Uh, let's make this red. Sorry. And let's make, let's see what that looks like. 
Okay, so then the paddle. So you'll notice when we change the fill, it stays that way. So we have to change it back. Let's make the the paddle blue. So zero zero two five five. So we can make the paddle blue. Okay. Eh, doesn't look all that great. Uh, whatever. That that'll be fine for now. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to make it move with the 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 mouse. So we want the mouse to be able to control the paddle so it moves around. So what we're gonna do is we're basically going to set the width or the, not the width the x equal to the mouse x. So it'll follow it around. Okay, so we solve one problem. Well, we created a new problem because remember at the beginning of the game I want the ball to be resting in the middle I want to follow this around so it's kind of difficult because I want to um, make it so that the ball follows it well it's only going to do that if the ball is not moving right I don't want it to follow the ball around when it's I mean the paddle around when it's moving so basically you know how in the ball class we have this if can move do all this stuff well we can also then write um, else so if it can't move, see remember this right here is, oh, that's the wrong place to put it. So you see that bracket is for this if, that's not where I want the else then. So this bracket is the one for the correct one. So then I can say, if you can't move, so if you if can move is false, then what I want you to do is I want you to um, set x equal to mouse x. Let's see how that works, because that's what is moving the paddle, right? That way they'll both move with the mouse. See? Yay! So, so now it's like this, and then I fire the ball, and it goes. Okay, so so far so good. Um, the end of the game, don't worry, we're going to reset the ball. So actually, let's go ahead and do that. We'll say if, um, we'll say if it hits the bottom, not only do we change, so instead of doing y equals height minus d, we'll just go back to where it started y equals what was the beginning height minus 70 so we'll just do height minus 70 so the ball basically will bounce around if it hits the bottom it just resets so we're ready to start again uh oh I have to reset also the velocity and so um, I'll say vy I didn't even think that would be a detail we'd cover in this video but I guess we are so anyways, now when it hits the bottom, it'll reset. I could fire the ball. Oh, oh dy equals negative 5. All right. Anyways, <laughs> what we're going to tackle next is making it bounce off the paddle. Okay, so remember, the x of the paddle is over there to the left of my fingers over there. So instead of having, um, so you see the mouse is kind of dictating. So we're going to have to check the side of the ball. So we want this ball to bounce off the paddle. So that's going to be kind of difficult because remember, we're controlling all of this game from the main class, from breakout. So the bottle, ball and the paddle don't really know each other are there. We're drawing a paddle and we're drawing a ball, but something else is controlling. The world is the breakout. And the world is not really, the, the paddle and the ball don't actually know each other exist. So we're going to have to tell them. You know, we're going to have to tell the ball, hey, listen, if you're close enough to the paddle where you're uh, colliding, we want you to bounce off. So that's kind of difficult to do. So let's go ahead and do, um, we'll write it in the, so we're, what's going to change? Well, the paddle's not going to change. The ball is going to change. So what we're going to do is we're going to write it in the, um, in the ball class. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a, um, a method called public void check paddle. So we're going to check to see if we are hitting the paddle. Okay. And so basically the code is going to be if it hits paddle. Okay. Then what I want to do is I want the VY to multiply by negative one. I'm going to kind of guide you through this one. Don't try to do this on your own. I mean you can if you're but basically what you have to do is figure out how you're gonna write how you're gonna determine if it's hit the paddle. So basically you're gonna check the x so if x is greater than the pad x minus uh, 50 right so if it's greater than 
the paddle x minus 50. Is it, it was 100 wide, right? How wide was the paddle's width? Oh, you know what I can do? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Let's just, this is going to be real object or so I'm not I'm going to say pad dot X okay so this is kind of difficult what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the entire paddle in so I'm going to tell the ball hey this is the paddle the paddle has all these variables X Y width height all of these variables so it has access to it so it can check the paddles X and its X so the pad dot X is the paddles X okay so if your X the ball is greater than the paddles x minus 50 or actually not minus 50 we'll do minus pad dot w over 2 so this is the width of the paddle remember the paddle has these variables so the width of actually it was 200 see I would have been off so if the x of the of the ball is greater than the the center of the paddle minus width over 2 okay Let's just try that right now. So what we're going to, have to do is we're going to have to tell it that we're going to pass in a paddle called pad. Okay. So that means this check paddle um, method needs to have a paddle, a pad into it. So when you come to the main and you say ball dot display, we're going to also tell it ball dot check paddle, and we'll t we're going to pass in the paddle, the paddle that we created. So we're gonna tell the um, paddle, look, we need we need to use all your private variables so that we can access them. We're gonna pass it to, so we're gonna give them to the ball so they can check. Okay, let's just see what happens, okay? So you see how it did that? So it's all like getting stuck there? That's because I'm just checking the X and I'm only checking if it's greater than the left edge. So that means it's always greater than, but that's actually looking pretty good. It's bouncing off the left edge. It's actually really nice. I like where this is at. So what I need to do is I have to also say and so it's, we have to we can't have it bouncing constantly. We want to make sure that it's only bouncing when it's in between the left edge and the right edge. So we'll add the right edge in that same method. So I checked it first just to see if it was working and then I'll write the rest. So I'll write and actually go ahead. So try to finish this method off from here. Take into account both edges and the height. So you'll have two more conditions, or three more, technically, to add. Okay, so pause the video. Unpause the video. <laughs> so let's see it. So then the other side will be x is less than pad dot x plus pad dot w over 2. Okay, let's check that one. By the way, if you actually are pausing the video, um, put a put a comment in the description so I can kind of like get an idea if that's something I should continue to do or not. So I'm kind of I'm a teacher, a high school teacher, so I kind of am trying to figure a way of what's what works for me. How am I learning how to do all this stuff? And most of it's because I'm actually doing it. So hopefully you guys are doing the same and not just um, copying and pasting everything. Although I I totally have copied and pasted my fair share of code. So whatever it takes to get you there huh so the last one is the height so I need the um, y to be um, greater than the pad y uh, I don't know what that's gonna look like let's just try that first okay so now it won't bounce until it gets to that looks pretty good I mean it's probably um, so let's let's not make it that far. Let's say minus our dot diameter, so the diameter of the ball, so it kind of bounces a little earlier. That's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy where that's at. Now there is one caveat. I could like trap the ball. You see how I did that? So I don't want it to be trapped. So what I want to do is I'll actually add the last condition, and y is less than pad dot y. We'll say plus d. So basically. Oh, pad dot y. So this way, it it can't bounce off unless it's inside of the the ball's diameter. Actually, I'm giving it two diameters total. But that should finish this off. This tutorial is done, I think. The uh... <laughs> so I guess at the very beginning, I ought to make sure that it's not stuck on there. But it's looking pretty good. So I think what I'll do is I'll do um, the beginning. 
So the same part where I say it can move, I'm also going to shift its Y position just to make sure. So ball dot Y um, minus equals five. So this is that kind of same idea. This is just a glitch. I don't want it to get stuck on the paddle because it'll look like I'm a bad programmer. <laughs> All right, so it looks pretty good now. Like I think I'm pretty happy with where we're at. We've got the ball bouncing off the ball, the paddle. We've got the paddle following the mouse. We've got some color. I mean, we're we're far away from the end, but we are making good progress. All right, hope you liked the video.